designed to determine whether an intensive lifestyle intervention would reduce the risk of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality compared to a control condition in overweight and obese individuals with type 2 diabetes. The study was stopped early because we had already shown our results. We had shown very conclusively that there were no differences in the number of cardiovascular events in the intensive lifestyle intervention versus the control group. We found no differences for cardiovascular morbidity and mortality or for any of our secondary cardiovascular outcome measures. There are several explanations for why we didn't see a difference in cardiovascular endpoints between the two arms. One possibility is that the Diabetes Support and Education Group, our comparison group, was receiving education about nutrition and physical activity, and they were also placed on more statins than the intervention group. So both the education and the statin use may have lessened any differences between the two arms. It's also possible that a 4% weight loss difference, which is what we found between intensive lifestyle intervention and the control group, was not large enough to produce a, a difference in cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. Another possibility is that maybe you have to intervene earlier in the sequence of, di of diabetes. These individuals have had diabetes on average about six years. Maybe you would need to intervene right after people develop diabetes or perhaps even before they develop diabetes to show beneficial effects of intensive lifestyle intervention on cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. It's very important to realize that while we did not find differences in cardiovascular outcome measures, we actually found many other beneficial effects of weight loss in a type 2 diabetic population. Most importantly, we showed that the intensive lifestyle intervention reduced the risk of high-risk chronic kidney disease by 31%. It also reduced the risk of developing incident depression by 20%. Lifestyle intervention reduced the risk of retinopathy by 20%. So many good benefits. Finally, we showed that the number of hospitalizations and the number of medications, and therefore the costs of hospitalizations and medications were reduced in the intensive lifestyle arm compared to the control. So it's still important to encourage patients with diabetes to lose weight, but the reason for encouraging it may be a little different than what we usually say. Rather than focusing on cardiovascular outcomes, we may really want to be encouraging our patients to lose weight so that they can protect themselves against the development of kidney disease, retinopathy, depression, and so they can save money on their hospitalizations and their medications. I think the take home message has got to be that our reasons for emphasizing weight loss may have to be a little different. We may want to focus more on the microvascular complications. Those are very, very important in terms of the long-term history of diabetes. And over time, may actually lead, show that there will be benefits in cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. So Look Ahead is continuing as an observational study. We're continuing to follow these participants over time and we'll be able to see whether there are any long-term differences in cardiovascular morbidity and mortality between the two arms in the trial.